All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Our chit chat, my favorite part of the day is the chit chat. So let's have this discussion. We have D. Diaz who is high and he's first as well. Carolyn, Carolyn says second. Yes, Jenna Teller. Hi, Jenna. How are you doing? Lorene, how are you doing? The Shri and then it started scrolling. The Shri, how are you doing? Um, hello back. Logic, you're here after a long time. What's the reason why one would be fine with the number one injection, but not the number two doctor being medical lectures? Are you talking about um, Moderna or vaccine that you take the first dose and you're feeling okay and the sec second dose and you're feeling crappy? If that is a question, I can, uh, I can definitely uh, talk about that. Thank you very much, Jenna. So here is Margaret. So Margaret, how are you doing? OK, cool. So um, I hope that logic, that was your question. <laughs> a person time in Texas like the first thing. Absolutely. How is everyone? It's so long that we have even done chit chat, but these have also been more. Here are, here are the questions, and let's talk about them. Um, how is everyone? Are you keeping safe, happy, healthy, happy that we are reaching almost near the end? I wish, I pray for everyone that uh, we all stay safe during this last part of the pandemic and reach successfully on the other end. Um, Catherine says, free speech being here. Welcome. Thank you very much. We need a lot of this free speech. Logic says, blood clots, Dr. Bean, medical lectures. So the blood clot, now if I combine your previous part of the question, what is the reason why one would be fine with the number one injection but not with the number two? So that's not the case. Actually, it is the other way around. I was actually looking at a cool bean. His name is David. He's from Israel. He's here in uh, San Jose. And we were going over the uh, Israeli data. And they were, talk they were talking about side effects as well. Majority of the side effects, even severe ones, are after the first, first one. More milder side effects, for example, fever or local injection pain or headaches, these can be more aggravated after the second dose because body is already ready to attack the virus and the second dose comes in and it, it goes to fighting. And that is the reaction we see. But, for example, the thrombosis is seen after the first one more and less after the second one. The reason is very simple. So if I share this, the reason, reason is in our plain sight. The reason is that body makes antibodies, correct? So let's say we got a vaccine or the virus, and here is the cell that is going to work on it. So the vaccine entered the cell, and it made spike proteins. Spike proteins were then the antigens were then presented on the surface of the cell. Here is the weird thing. Ideally, what we are trying to do is we are trying to say that this is a SARS-CoV-2 virus. This is the structure of its spike protein. So let me just quickly draw a few of them. So let's say we are saying that, hey, body, please the immune system recognize this is the structure of the spike protein. So we are trying to show a pattern of the spike protein. That piece of the pattern, we cannot show the whole spike protein, but we chop it up. We make the spike proteins in here inside the cell. Then we chop it up into smaller pieces. Then we exhibit those smaller pieces. And we hope that those smaller pieces that are exhibited, and when the immune system cells, naive T cell, T helper 2 cell, or T helper 1 cell, then B cell, plasma cell versus cytotoxic T cell. In this pathway, what would happen is that those small pieces that we are showing, the body would develop defenses against them. Good. So if we are going to make a, an antibody, we're going to make an antibody that can attack this little piece here. And that little piece will be found on the actual virus's spike protein. So when the virus comes in, we'll attack it. Unfortunately, in some people, when the vaccine is chopped up, so imagine if you have given a piece of rope to 100 people, 
the size of the rope is the same. You gave them a scissors and a piece of scissors and piece of rope. And you ask them to cut them in 10 pieces. When they all would, would cut them, they all will cut them in different lengths. So the pattern that would emerge is going to be very different for each person. So it is unfortunately what is happening is that some pattern that are being shown here are similar looking to platelet factor 4 protein. Platelet factor 4 protein. So what happens is that our body then makes antibodies against this protein in addition to making antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2. And the result is that when this happens, now how many days would it take after the first dose? So I want to keep in the context of the first and second dose. After the first dose, it can be five days to 17 days that the antibodies are being made. That is the kind of time you take also to become st to start making your protection for for the SARS-CoV-2. So let's say between this mean is nine days, nine days. Most of the people are reacting with clotting by ninth day. So in that time frame, after the first shot, there is the antibodies made. Those antibodies are going to go and attach with the platelet or the platelet factor four, and then maybe bind with the platelet as well. That would cause activation of the platelet, and that would cause thrombosis. Now, if the body has reacted this way after the first dose, then it would not do. It would do the same thing with the second dose, and hopefully, we would not give second dose. We should not give second dose to such patients. Now, if body did not react this way to the first dose, it is going to be very difficult for body to be able to do the same kind of an error and produce these antibodies against the second dose. Because when the second dose comes in, our body is already ready to attack it with pre-made cells who would make antibodies and attack this area. We would still make more, but predominantly the pre-made cells would attack. So that is why second dose is less important and first dose is more important. Uh, CA says, question, how soon after the two-week fully vaccinated window do you think it's safe to be put under anesthesia for med procedures? Two weeks fully vaccinated. After the two-week fully vaccinated window, it is safe. So let's think about it together. In case of anesthesia, what is happening is that we are giving drugs, molecules that are going to work on our, on our neural, uh, nervous system to kind of bring our either dissociate our pain from our rest of the consciousness or just reduce the feeling of pain or just take the consciousness out for some time. The vaccine and antibodies would have nothing to do with that. So that there should be no issue. The issue only is inflammation. If somebody has inflammation and then they have vaccine, and the vaccine causes more inflammation. So now that can trigger the inflammation a little more. That is why people develop more joint pains or more muscle pains. Or I developed a lot of uh, uh, throat pain because I was already feeling congested on this side. And after vaccine, this side, which was already not doing good, which was already being inflamed, just became more inflamed because vaccine triggered inflammatory system. And wherever it was working, it just worked more. It amplified it. Westfield, thank you very much for the super chat. I also see Rajesh, thank you very much for the super chat. Rajesh says, Dr. Mean, please take Saturdays and Sundays off. You are deserve rest after doing double shifts. Thank you very much. So I would take Saturday and Sunday off. Last time what we did was I struck a deal for my Saturday with my wife to say, this is my day to think about what other topics to do, how do we move forward? And so just doing some free thinking and Sunday was family time. So it kind of gave me some extra a benefit. So thank you very much. <laughs> Francis, we I love this. We, uh, Carlos says, Ortiz, hi, Dr. Bean. If someone faces thrombosis due to vaccine and recovers, could they get thrombosis again once exposed to the real virus after vaccination? Very good question. And the Answer is possible, but let's look at the mechanism again. The mechanism is that somehow the vaccine 
is creating a piece of uh, antigen epitope that is recognized our, uh, by our body as a mimicry of platelet factor 4. Now, that may be because, let's say, here is a vaccine, and this is the last part of the vaccine, which when broken off as an epitope, this is mimicking platelet factor 4-like epitope. If that is the case, when the whole virus comes in, that would not happen. Or that would have a very small chance because virus may be cut in different other ways. So possibility is yes, because the little epitope that is doing it is similar in the virus as well. Now, if the epitope that is doing it is vaccine adjuvant or lipid particle or adenovirus part, then actual virus will not do that. So what I do not know is what is in the vaccine that is doing it. This is why I keep uh, making this noise that we should recognize, we should accept. This actually is a more benign thing to accept because then we can fix it compared to something that we cannot fix. So we should accept it, we should do research on it, we should try to figure out what is causing it and either fix the vaccine or have the solution available. If it is because of some adjuvants or some extra thing in the vaccine, then the virus will not do it. If it is because of some incorrect vaccine structure, that spike protein is chopped off just slightly wrongly, then they can increase the RNA as well. So my thinking is it is vaccine related and the actual virus would not do this. Liza says, why is happening in younger people more than the older people? So that is another, that is a very good question. So the theories are all over the place. People who are taking contraceptive, women, maybe it is happening in them. Women who have uh, hormones, they are in the fertile period of their life. It is because of the hormones. Some are saying because women are smoking, this is why it is happening. So they don't actually know yet that what is exactly the reason that it is in that group. So because of that, I don't know that either. Um, I think that it is fair to say that adenovirus-based vaccine folks knew this before, and we should just accept it and then do research on it. If we don't accept it, we will not do research on it. We'll just keep closing our eyes to say this happens. We'll just keep saying, remember in the beginning, the, the most common message was, well, it happens the same with the same frequency in the others. So now why is it happening 10 times more? Okay, so Doug says, is it worth repairing a junk Mercedes? <laughs> so I have a Mercedes, I think that is 2012 or 13. So I'm pretty happy with that one. It is not junk yet, but Mercedes is a good car. So I think so, yes. So I'll tell you something interesting. When I was a young child, and my I've mentioned it once before, I come from a broken family, so my parents separated, and I was raised by my uncle, my mother's brother. And um, in those days, we were quite poor. The families were actually originally fine and established, but with this uh, this family break and, and all the things associated with it, we, this family, four of us, our brothers and our mother, we became extra poor. So uh, as part of that, when I was growing up, I started learning how to how to repair washing machines. And I still remember I was so young that I would not even be as tall as the washing machine, but I used to know how to repair it. Then I, as I kept growing, I learned more and I used to have a dream. My dream used to, to own a motorbike instead of a bicycle and to be able to be a car mechanic instead of a washing machine Meow. repair person. Hey, Luffy, Meow. come here. What happened? <laughs> Kyrie said something. 
she always beat you up. Then you come here and <laughs> start doing this. Come here. So <laughs> sorry. So my wife called him and he ran away. So the um, my dream used to be to have a respectable job. And again, it is respectable job to be a car mechanic. Nothing bad in it. But that used to be my highest dream. That could I be a car mechanic in my life instead of uh, repairing washing machines? And the second thing I used to be thinking is, could I have, instead of a bicycle, could I have a motorbike? So that was my total dream in the beginning of my life. So talking about Mercedes, I, uh, I recall that. I've not forgotten where I come from, but um, I have also, that does not pull me down. It actually gives me a lot of courage. It gives me a lot of uh, energy to continue to work. Okay, so uh, Westfield says, why do we not have inactivated virus vaccines by now? And do they think, and do think they would be much safer since it's long proven technology? So Westfield we have. So China has uh, their inactivated, vi uh, sorry, yes, China, Sinopharm is inactivated virus. India has an inactivated virus. And I think that these are good vaccines. Wow. So I hope he's okay. <laughs> Ditching the grind. Thank you very much. So of course, now my dreams have become big. So I came to US, um, started working here. Here I am in front of you. So of course, I'm very grateful to this country as well. I say this very many times to people that what we enjoy here, the good roads and good infrastructure and sitting here and asking for freedom and all that, hundreds of years of people's sacrifices brought us here. So it is not to be taken for granted. There is a lot of value in it that is, that is built in it by the people who were here before us. And they did something kind for us that they built those things or started building this. So I'm actually a beneficiary of that system. And I'm hoping I can do something in return as well. Denise says, doctor, as a certified D EDS patient advocate, we actually do have increased risk of clotting and blood disorders. Please retract your statement earlier for your own sake. Any let me know. Thanks. Uh, so absolutely. Um, which statement that the clotting risk is lesser? Did I say uh, after the second dose? Yeah, sure. So the clotting risk is there. Yes, absolutely. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so Paul Borg says, do you still have a bicycle or motorbike? So I do have bicycles. Uh, I do not have a motorbike, but I have my <laughs> other cars. So uh, Building Maker says, is this phenomena possibly underreported? It may be underreported if there are some cases which are mild enough that people do not end up in the hospitals. Normally, if it just continues to happen, people would end up in the hospital. Sipple Steve says, read about a skin sweat sensor that monitors for two proteins that increase prior to onset of cytokine storm could be used for early diagnosis and treatment. Have you heard about this? No, but this is an interesting idea. So the question is, does this happen to everyone? So skin sweat sensor, I'm going to write it down for severe COVID. Aliji says, I think you are a graduate from KE Medical College. Yes. So I did. Denise says, correct. So yes, the chance of chance of clotting is there without the vaccine, with COVID, with vaccine as well. Chance of clotting is more with the first one than the other. Now, this question that was that, hey, can the clotting occur when the actual infection would occur? Infection itself has a chance of clotting as well. So that means it has some other epitopes too. But 
vaccine and infection, do they have a similar epitope? That is what I was discussing. There is a general chance of clotting with COVID as well. So we just talked about it. <laughs> Stratilize says, what is your recommendation for best washing machine? So I have since not seen. This is the time when used to be there used to be those bucket-like washing machines, and there used to be a bucket in them on top, and there used to be a, <laughs> there a cover on top of it. So these are older types. <laughs> Colin says, what would Ivermectin man do so now if you had become a mechanic? <laughs> yes. So Ivermectin man would have been made by someone else. Frank. Fano says, MCAS patient here, got my first dose, Moderna. No allergic reaction, very good. But I started with body aches last night until tonight. So when did you get it? What are the chances that the second dose will bring an allergic response? Allergic response is, again, the same as just we talked about clotting as well. Allergic response is going to be dependent upon how badly your mast cells respond, not the just the MCAS itself. So what medicines are you taking? Do you have any response the first time? It is actually seen that many people who have anaphylaxis, for example, I didn't have anaphylaxis, but I had allergic reactions, and nothing happened to me with the, with the vaccine, although the person giving me were, were very nervous. So the best thing is to talk with the doctor to say, hey, this is my history. It didn't happen with the first time. Is there a chance for the second? I was looking at the Israeli data, and the second time chance was actually lower for many of such things. There was more chance of the body responding and causing headaches and tiredness. For example, tiredness was the most after the second dose. So, but do talk with your doctor. Thank you very much, TQI Diet, for the super chat. Uh, there is a question, TG, TG Black. Arnold Chiari malformation and DJD plus history of seizures. I'm lost as to what to decide with the vaccines. So all of these Arnold Chiari malformation or history of seizures are not directly related to inflammation. That is a genetic uh, malformation. That is one. And if the seizures are epilepsy-like things, so that is usually not by the inflammation. So ideally, in such cases. You can talk with the doctor, and if you do not have any ongoing meningitis, for example, or ongoing inflammatory state that is dangerous, or your other body's you know, situation, how frail, how healthy you are, based on that, they should decide. I think Arnold Chiari malformation has not much to do with this. This is a good question, ulcerative colitis patient. So Rajesh, ulcerative colitis is something to do with the autoimmune. So although they have used vaccines in autoimmune, in trial, and they have used them on preference with them and found them to be fine, um, but because this is an immune system, it is possible that taking a vaccine can trigger the immune system and maybe aggravate the ulcerative colitis for some days. So this is why talk with the doctors, see what medicine was keeping you stable? I think they would adjust the dose or they would discuss with you that take this dose, then go for the vaccine. So Gulafshan says, fasting good or bad after vaccine? So the there are two type of answers to this, right? One answer is simply if you cannot take it, for example, vaccine is making you nervous and anxious and you're going to have the vaccine and you don't want to fast in that. I think, I think, and again, religious folks know better, so I would defer it to them. But I think that it is uh, given as a flexibility to say, don't uh, take it, don't, don't fast. The other one is that um, fasting itself and vaccine itself have no relationship from a medical mechanism point of view, meaning Taking vaccine would not do anything. It would cause inflammation, local inflammation, or systemic inflammation, but nothing else. It can cause nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, which may break the fast if the vomiting occurs, or it may cause 
I hope not, bleeding from the site of injection, which may break the fast and so on. But generally, it has nothing. For example, my next vaccine is on 5th, and I'll be fasting, but I'll take it. Art Ninjiok says, lately I'm becoming too scared to ask for help from doctors, but not you, Dr. King Bean. I'm scared to ask for help. What should I do to overcome my fear of doctors that are focused on treatment, not prevention? Uh, one, unfortunately, this is such a situation. Second, doctors mostly are very, very good, actually much better than me for managing their day-to-day -day patient care. So they are experts in, in seeing the diseases that occur in their communities more often, the kind of patients, your history, how to manage you. So they are actually totally fine. It is just that this is a new thing and it required everyone to learn and not everyone did that. That does not discount their experience and expertise in other areas. Okay, so Ali G says, question, do you know a specialist doctor who could treat Langerhans cell histiocytosis in US? Not off the top of my head. I will have to ask my friends. William Goff says, question, how much longer do you feel it will be before the US is considerably safer and COVID cases are way down? So really when we reach about 50%, 60% of vaccination or vaccination plus herd immunity from infection when we reach that point. So my thinking is we are still just one or two months. I thought that one or two, March, April is what I thought we will be out. I was late for the vaccine as well for a couple of months, so I might be late, but I think that we are just a couple of months. Uh, we are knocking at the door to get out. Christine says, Dr. Bean, have you heard about the menstruation issues associated with the Pfizer vaccine? Thousands are reporting this to Dr. Kate Clancy, University of Illinois. So let me actually do this. I heard that before as well. And um, I talked about it, but I made a conjecture. So let me... And we'll talk about it. Thank you very much for the topic. So I cannot read your name. Question, misleading WhatsApp messages by doctors, oximeter, vitamin C, D, zinc, paracetamol, steam inhalation, ginger inhalation, potley of ajwain, all good tips, no mention of starting ivermectin. Yeah, so I was seeing this that in India, um, this is happening now. Just like in the beginning of the pandemic, it started happening that here is an Oxford uh, sorry, Stanford doctor who's saying do this and Japanese doctor who's saying drink water. Uh, I, I'm seeing a similar thing happening once more. Yes, ivermectin should have been there, hydroxy and others. I do not know if these people are doing this out of goodness of their heart, but there are some things that are not correct. Liza says, you're an optimist. Thank you very much. I think we'll be out in a couple of months. Passing time in Texas says, why do the same comments show up over and over? My Wi-Fi? Maybe. Um, so Texas Max says, Dr. Mean, maybe we can set up private no liability functional doctor reference pages for cool beans. We can do it. We can do it. Yes. Someone has to join hands with me. So if I take up the actions to say I'll do that, then I just keep taking on things. Someone has to raise their hand and say, I can do this, and then we can work together. Paul Boak is saying, yes, he has a first Moderna so second. So I think that is about me. So yes, I have Moderna, and second one is on fifth. Steve Wes Westman says, Stephen Westman says, Dr. Say, did you have time to see Israeli colonial P article preprint about vaccine and variant? Sent link last night, chat, great tutorial. I have not. Did you send it to me in an email? I haven't even. Today's day was weird. It just passed by. 
Um, but if you sent it in an email or Twitter, I'll look into it. I did spend some time today with David, who is a, a cool bean from Israel, and he's here. And we went over the data, which was written in Israeli Hebrew language. And I wanted to understand a little more about the vaccination data. <clears throat> Big Boo says, any recommendation how to get rid of brain fog? So hopefully you are talking in context of, uh, uh, what is that? SARS-CoV-2, COVID. I have done a video about brain fog, myalgia, and please do look at that. There is a neck massage, there is neck pumping is in there, and there are some more ideas in there as well. In addition to this, what I have heard from the cool beans here. So that means it's not a study. It's not some data oriented thing. It is anecdotal that folks have been very much helped by. So some folks with fluvoxamine, others not with fluvoxamine, actually becoming more with fluvoxamine. And instead, their tinnitus, for example, with antihistamines, which I would think other neurological symptoms should help as well. So for brain fog, a lot of people have said that neck massages and the neck pumping that I've discussed in the other video, that has been very helpful. With that, ivermectin has been helpful as well for some. I think steroids would help as well. So please talk with your doctor and have a cocktail made for you. Sipper Steve says, hit the like button, everyone. Smash the bell as well. Yes, that would make Luffy a happy cat, absolutely. So Denise says, what do you think about Brazil having 40% in their ICU below age 40? So I was actually reading some of the articles. So that means I don't have scientific data. It is news. And we already know news is not the most accurate thing. They were saying it is just because the prevalence is so much now. The, the rate is so much. And so many people older have already become infected and recovered or unfortunately uh, become a victim of it, that now it is whoever is available, and these are the youngsters, babies, and other folks as well. So that may be the reason. Uh, it may be that the variant has more propensity for the younger, but I cannot imagine the mechanism yet. So, Denise, I think we'll have to do some research to see if there is a medical reasoning other than just this is the age group available. Roman says, Dr. Bean Medical Lectures, YouTube takes a cut of every dollar we give you. 4013C would eliminate that. Many companies match donation to 4013C and donations are written out by donors. Win, win for all. So I know that you have said it to me many times. So I promise you that I'll talk with my accounting head this coming week and get the 4513C. So give me a week or so, and we'll do it. Thank you very much for, for, for this. So how about we break for now? Let's answer a couple of more questions. Then we break, and then we meet each other on Monday. So George says, I think if there will be really boost, it should be via, via nasal, which might be less deactogenic, but hopefully very immunogenic and sterilizing. Do you think the same? I would, I would really want that there is no booster. I would hate it that if I have to go every year to get SARS-CoV-2 um, vaccine. But let's say that if it has to be, then of course this is going to be more convenient compared to going and getting a jab. So yes, now mechanistically until these vaccines come out and their mechanisms are there and we see in the trials, how do they pan out? That is when we'll see their pros and cons. Kathy says, uh, how long do you think it is safe to take ivermectin as a preventative? So Kathy, this is a question that not much of us have the answer for. Ivermectin has not been used like there, there has been ivermectin usage for skin or other cases, but used like this for a very chronic time is not been there before. And because of that, it is really not known how, what would happen with continuous, continuous use. Dr. Corey, when we had him on our show here, he felt that it was fine. It is a drug, just like we take a painkiller. Pain 
and it is fine to take it uh, for a long term. I have been using it for now months and it is fine. My family has been using it and it is fine. I know some of the folks who've been using it even before me. But again, answering your question from a data or mechanism point of view is not possible. John Snyder, thank you very much for the super chat. So one more question and then we break. So Ali G says, if someone's monocyte count is 0 0.6 because he has been receiving chemotherapy, now the chemo has been stopped and he got first dose of AstraZeneca, is he still at risk? At risk of uh, what? At risk of clotting or as at risk of COVID? Ali G, can you explain a little more? I would stay around to answer that part of the question. Zia says, love you and so happy to be here. Definitely. Thank you very much for being here. Um, so while I wait for Ali G's questions, Bert says question, one question, and that is, and that is, can ivermectin be measured or seen either coating the virus spike protein or the ACE2 receptor? Is can the method of IVM be scientifically be viewed or measured? So, Bert, this this specific mechanism has been an in silico study. That means it has been observed in computer only. So far, we have not seen the virus and the drugs working on it in in vit in vivo in our body. We have seen the re responses of the uh, results of the drugs in vitro, or we have seen the results in us after with the symptoms, clinical symptoms, but not through an observation like an electron microscope. So this is a, this one is an in silico uh, function that means in computer. So it may be happening or it may not be happening. Steve says, hit the like button, yes. Please do that. <laughs> Pasin says, barbecue me, me too. So that is a discussion. PXP has another question. Thanks so much for your involvement and information, Dr. Bean. Is ivermectin effective in severe cases developed phase of the disease? I have seen ivermectin to be effective in all cases. It has been seen that in these severe cases, sometimes the patient is just so, so much in, in stress that they don't bounce back. And I have a case in which ivermectin was given in severe cases. They bounced back for a couple of days. Oxygen started improving, but then they uh, they took them off the ventilator, and then they could not stabilize the patient, and they died. So ivermectin is useful in all cases, but patient's own situation is also important. Doug says, uh, much appreciated. Thank you very much, Doug. Ditching the grind hugs to all. Absolutely. So I think I don't see a... follow up galaxy so let's do this one as a last question galaxy says shouldn't aspiration be advised during injection so that the vaccine doesn't come in contact with platelets so galaxy i did a very detailed discussion about this no it is not necessary to do aspiration because if the if the injection is being given in the deltoid muscle and this has been a science that has been proven again and again i have done a study in which I try to use those mechanisms that may be in this line, but there is no me such mechanism that can happen. So Art Patron Forever says, <clears throat> NMR has been recently used to visualize hydroxychloroquine binding to capsid protein of SARS-CoV-2, so could probably do some for ivermectin. Correct. If there is a way that they have started seeing it, then they can do that for ivermectin as well. Absolutely. And uh, once again, there are some countries in Europe that have said to aspirate, that they have asked their uh, nursing staff to aspirate. I thought, and let me just say it once more, I think that saying that this is somehow staff's issue that they were not aspirating and so they were injecting the vaccine in the blood and that was doing it. That is a discussion that we had that it is a very difficult thing to prove that even when the vaccine is near, first of all, getting it in the blood is very difficult. 
the way we are saying, just directly injecting into an artery or a vein. So I think that it is OK, but there are some countries that, that, that are doing it. I think that you can ask your provider who is injecting to say, can you please aspirate? And that should be OK. Excellent. So, so I, LEG says, risk of COVID-19 and risk of clotting. So now I have to go. So your question was about the chemotherapy, then off of the chemotherapy, then using AstraZeneca. So the AstraZeneca's clotting risk is independent of the chemotherapy going on or stopped. COVID-19 getting risk is known that after the first dose, you don't become or somebody does not become immediately protected. You still have to go on for whatever the time window, which is different in some countries. And then after that, there is another couple of weeks with the full immunity. So that is the company's message that maybe 90 days after the first dose and then another uh, 15 days after the second dose. So thank you very much, everyone. And have a nice weekend. Please like, subscribe, and share. There are three links in the description. One link is if you would like to buy me a coffee. The other link is if you would like to become a patron. And the third link is if you wanted to support this work in general. So thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. I would see you on Monday. Bye-bye.